All right, so solving rational equations is essentially the same as solving any equation. The only thing we need to do is we need to start by finding our asymptotes, start by finding any restrictions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to factor. Okay, so factoring also will help us eliminate things. It's going to help the equation look a little easier. So we're going to start by simplifying this. Um, what is this going to be? X minus 4, X plus 1 equals 3x plus 2, and this is going to be x plus 1, x minus 1. So the first thing we should recognize here is that x cannot equal 1, negative 1, or 4. Okay, you could put plus or minus 1, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've got all of our restrictions. I'm not going to get too concerned if they're in... Um, sequential order, as long as they're all there, it doesn't really matter, you've stated them. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just set it equal to zero. All I'm going to do is bring one of the fractions over to the other side. Okay, so we've got x plus 1 minus 3x plus 2 over x plus 1 and x minus 1. So now that equals to zero. Well, for us to be able to get rid of the bottom, because we only really care about the top when we're dealing with fractions, we need to make a common denominator. And what's not common, or I guess I should say, what is common for both of these is the x plus 1. So what I need to do is I need to multiply the first bracket by x minus 1. So we're going to have x minus 5 times x minus 1. In the second bracket, I need to multiply or sorry, I'm saying bracket, the second fraction, I need to multiply by x minus 4. And now my bottom of my fraction is going to be x minus 4, x plus 1, x minus 1. And this is all equal to 0. So really, I can multiply all of that stuff up to the other side, and this is all going to go away, because it's all equal to 0. So now, all we have to do is expand and simplify. So here we've got x squared minus 6x plus 5 minus 3x squared minus 10x minus 8 equals 0. So I'm going to just come up here. So we've got now negative 2x squared um, minus 16x, and that's going to be a double negative, so plus 13 equals 0. And we can look at that, see if we can factor it out there or anything. It doesn't look like we can. So here, I'm going to just make it 2x squared plus 16x minus 13 equals 0. Plug this into the, so I've moved everything to the other side of the equation. Plug this into the quadratic formula. Um, we're going to get x equals negative 16 plus or minus square root of 16 squared, which is 256, minus, um, what do we have here, 4 times 2 times 13, so it's going to be plus 104, all over 4, so 256 plus 104 is 360, and the square root of 360 is about 18 point, let's say, well, we have to keep a couple decimals here, um, we're going to have Let's, why don't we just leave it as this? You could reduce this down if you really wanted to, um, but I'm not too concerned. So you could divide out the uh, root 36 would become, you'd get what? 6 root 10. So root 360 would be 6 root 10. Then you could divide it all by 2 and get your solutions. Okay, so that would be how you do that. A lot of this is actually useful when we're doing questions someone like this. Okay, so 
These are very difficult questions to set up. So you really have to think about how am I going to set this question up? So Jimmy bought a case of concert shirts for $450. That says four, not or $450. Okay, he kept two for himself and sold the rest for $560. Now he made a profit of $10 per shirt. How many were each shirt or how many t-shirts were in the case? So what we have to think of is the cost of one shirt because it says the profit for one shirt is $10. Well, what that means is profit is how much he sold it. So we're looking at one shirt. Consider one shirt. Okay. What we're going to say is let X be the number of shirts. So if we're considering one shirt, we know that the cost, we could consider more, but it's just going to make things difficult. We know that the um, that we've sold the shirt for $560 over X minus 2. Okay, so that would be $560 we sold all of the shirts for. If we looked at the cost of one, this is for, sorry, the sale price of one minus the cost of one, which would have been 450 over X. So let's say there were 10 shirts. If we did 450 divided by 10, that would be 45. Okay, then we would do 560 divided by eight and get what, 65 or something like that. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to 10 because that equals our profit. Okay, so the sale minus the cost equals the profit. And we know the profit for one shirt is $10. So now we can go through and slowly solve this. I'm going to multiply each term by x and each term by x minus 2. So this is going to become 560x minus 450x. And then the double minus or double negative becomes plus 900 equals, and then we've got 10 times both of the bottoms, so x squared minus 2x. So that's going to become what? 110. We'll move it all over to one side. So we're going to get. 0 equals 10x squared. And I'm only moving it to the right here because I want to have a positive x squared value. It wouldn't really matter. You could change them all after. So we're going to get something like that, okay, when it's all said and done. Well, we can divide everything by 10 there, make it a little bit easier. So we get x squared minus 13x minus 90. Now that's going to be factored to x minus 18 and x plus 5. So therefore, x equals 18 or x equals negative 5. Well, we can't, we know that negative 5 doesn't work. We can't have negative 5 shirts that we bought at the start. We weren't giving them shirts and paying them $450. So therefore, 18 shirts were in the case. Okay, and we would have known from the start that x cannot equal 0 or 2. But that wouldn't make sense if it equaled 0 or 2 anyway. So, um, we didn't really need to state that as part of the question but it does help us with our restrictions. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And again, this one's a little bit harder too. You really need to think about these questions. Most um, questions are set up something like what I was just talking about or like this. Um, this is like a painting a room type question or delivering things type question. 
what we have to look at here is it says when delivering or when working together bobby and judy can deliver flyers to all the homes in 42 minutes when judy works alone she's 13 minutes faster than bobby when he works alone how long does he take to do all of the flyers well let's let our x be bobby's time okay so be bobby's Now, what we're considering here is the amount of time we know we're working together, okay? So we know we're going to have something. We're going to have, um, who are they? Judy plus Bobby. And you could have done Bobby plus Judy. doesn't really matter. Equals total. Okay, so that's kind of our equation here. You could add in as many people as you want. Okay, but what we're going to look at, what we're actually going to consider is we're going to make some sort of ratio. Okay, so my ratio is going to be the number of routes divided by the time. Okay, because they all do a route and we want to know Bobby's time. Okay, so here, if we had 1 over 42. Okay, so one route for both of them, and it took them 42 minutes. Okay, so I guess Bobby time is in minutes. Bobby was one over X. Judy is one over, now she's 13 minutes faster, so X minus 13. So the time for Judy to do one route is the number of routes over the time. Bobby is the number of routes over the time. And both of them together is 1 over 42. So now we can just slowly start working this out. So we're going to have x plus x minus 13 all divided by, so all I'm doing here is a common denominator, equals... 1 over 42. Well, now I can get 42. I'm going to cross multiply. So 42 times 2x minus 13 equals, and this is just multiplying it by 1, so we've got x squared minus 13x. Well, now I need to collect like terms. So we'll bring it all to the right. So we'll have 0 equals x squared minus, that's uh, 84, so 97x, and then this is 546, and luckily, this actually does factor, okay, so we get that, so we have x minus, or x equals 6, or x equals 91. Now, we can ignore the x equals 6 because Judy has to be able to deliver it 13 minutes faster than Bobby. Judy can't be done 7 minutes before she started. That doesn't make sense. We can't acknowledge that. So therefore, Bobby takes... Oh, 91 minutes. And if we did 1 over um, 91 minus 13 is what, 78 plus 1 over 91, you're going to find that it equals 1 over 42. Okay, so there's my check, and that would just be mental math that I would do over to the side. All right.